Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and this episode after fulfilling this first weather satellite contract that we have lingering from the previous episode we are going to try and toss some things to the moon and see what sticks and uh, well it's probably going to all feel miserably but we're going to learn a few things and hopefully we'll eventually get it right. My first attempt is built around this Pioneer probe Pioneer 0 slash 1 dash slash 2, not exactly the most successful series of probes, but it has many interesting features. I've dumped its solid propellant, which was actually meant to get it into orbit around the moon, very ambitious for an early lunar probe, uh, but it does have mass spectrometry, impact logging, visible imaging, magnetic scan, and analyze telemetry and log radiation. So that's a lot of instruments built in, in a very convenient package. Also, it has integrated Omni 5,000 kilometers, which presumably is enough to stretch to the moon given a proper tracking station. I mean, after all, this was a lunar probe, so I hope that's enough, and I hope it's enough electric charge, we're gonna find out. Um, so yeah, um, of course, it doesn't provide full avionics for this stage, so we're gonna have to spin stabilize this air B stage, it's the XASR again, and we're gonna do that with the existing second stage of the Aldebaran rocket. And so there's the same rocket that you saw a lot of in the previous episode, and hopefully it'll do good work for us in this episode as well. We're only using uh, 41 seconds with the SASR, XASR, and that is of course because that's all we need to get to the moon. 3087 should do the trick, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, I generally budget a little bit more than one, uh, 3100, but um, yeah, um, perhaps we can uh, figure that out by reducing the utilization on this battery if it turns out that we don't have enough. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. There, uh, I think I'll be happier with that number at the end of the day. So there's just a battery in a service module and uh, perhaps some other time on some other occasion we can put something else here, perhaps some RCS fuel and we can add RCS thrusters or something like that. I did put supplementary antennae just in case and yeah, so that's the idea. Uh, we're right at the limit for the rocket of course, 70 tons is all we've got avionics for. But Delta V wise, everything seems to be all right. The question is whether it's going to work. So with that, uh, I don't actually want its solid engine. So uh, it actually looks like this and I've sort of um, rotated things and smushed things together in order to make it into this. Aerodynamically, it's probably a nightmare, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, it'll be a test. 84 days to build and uh, yeah we should we should probably spend some money to get more build points at this point I feel like what I need for reserve is about 10 launches worth of money and let's just estimate a launch to be 20,000 just to give buffer to it so I, I think reserving 200,000 is sufficient um, yeah so we will do that so Build that. I mean, the thing is, I have, uh, you know, some minor experience with risk management, so I can't, I can't just throw money at and uh, go into negative territory. I, I don't, I don't want to go through that. So um, we are going to be cautious about our monies, but still, I think uh, we can get that many. And let's increase that. We should increase R and D as well. Maybe two points in R&D and two points in build points. I know people are saying you should have, you know, a lot more build points and everything. I don't know how it's supposed to be played. I get the strange feeling that a lot of people in the comments have been frequenting the Realism Overhaul Discord or something and know how the people who made it wanted it to be played. I've cautiously avoided paying any attention to that and I'm just sort of trying to figure it out based on the information presented in the game and what seems logical to me. And if that's not the logic that they anticipated, well, that's just gonna make it more interesting. So here we are. Now for the weather satellite contract. 
Okay, so our rocket for this contract is a little bit awkwardly shaped because we only have one of these service module tanks because we only need 39 units of the weather satellite payload and so it's sort of foreshortened but it is what it is, it is what we need and specifically we want to get into a 300 kilometer, above a 300 kilometer orbit the inclination is not specified, but the eccentricity is. So that's the important part. And we'll try and manage that as best we can. All right. So on that note, I did rush it just a little bit. I tossed on an extra thousand funds to rush it uh, by a little bit. But anyway, ignition. And launch. Yeah, very awkward looking rocket, but very mathematically sensible, I guess. I don't know. Interesting clouds, probably toxic. So the easiest thing is to make sure that this gets us to a 300 kilometer apoapsis right away. And then when we light the, the able stage, can just sort of circularize at that. Lots of g-forces, we're above 300 kilometers there. And that should be plenty of margin. Okay, RCS on, separation. Throttle down. Okay, can these AJ-10s ignite? Ignition. Nope. We have lost one engine. Well, you know, we had good luck last time. Okay, 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 okay. You, you don't have to do that anymore. Well, this is a bust. We can just leave this be. Uh, so, we didn't really have a backup uh, being prepared. We'll uh, queue that up next. The next thing is actually an Aldebaran Pioneer. And I'll see whether I want to launch that or just another one of these. Well, the interesting thing is we're going to get basic avionics and probes in about 33 days, which is right after this one finishes, uh, right before this one finishes. And taking a look at what that includes, that includes a whole bunch of interesting things, especially some other probes. But the early controllable core here is especially enticing. And probe core avionics would be great. The Delta avionics package is a favorite in certain circumstances. A Gene avionics package also very helpful. But uh, maybe these days the procedural avionics is the way to go. In any case, um, that seems like it could change quite a lot of things. The Thor Delta avionics will save us one of the Thor cores that we're currently carrying. So lots of good stuff here. And those, I, I feel like, would be more helpful for the lunar mission. So maybe we should put this on the back burner and queue up another Aldebaran B and try the weather satellite contract again. Okay, so here we go again. And let's remind ourselves the mean time before failure for uh, the lower stage engines here is 22.5 minutes and the AJ-10's 23.96 minutes. We've got full data units on everything. This is as good as they get. <laughs> All right, well, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. The nice thing about the lunar contracts is they give you a lot of funds up front though. The trouble is we actually have to fulfill the contract, otherwise we're in big trouble. tight here. Okay, that's fine. All right, so here we go again. RCS on. Separation. 
I think one of the underappreciated things is the fact that in real life, they really did have to do multiple launches and they always had backups and they generally failed one out of every two pro mission anyway. So it's not unrealistic the way it's going for us. I'll give it that. Fuel seems settled. Ignition? Nope. <laughs> uh, okay, well, this episode is gonna be like this, is it? Once we unlock the Agena engine, <laughs> the, the, these, these, these engines are going away and we're gonna put an Agena on here, or maybe an updated AJ-10. That'll make things a lot better. But right now, this is what we've got. All right, back to Space Center. Actually, hold that thought. I decided to look at what Test Flight actually said. It says performance loss. So it cheated me. I mean, if you're gonna kill the entire engine, you don't get to call it performance loss. That's, uh, that's, that's all of the performance, for heaven's sakes. Yep, I don't know what Test Flight is up to. Now, it might have occurred to you that we had originally sized this rocket for a much larger payload. And you might be wondering at this point, can we get by with just one AJ-10? Since one of them tends to work. And uh, it looks like that is possible. It's a little bit tight, but it is possible, especially since uh, taking off the extra tank means that we get to fill these up just a little bit more. So that compensates a little bit. But uh, still, you know, we still got an AJ-10. So, and these guys down here are just waiting to fail on us. You know it. And we can take a look. Uh, we still got these, the stupid LR-43 configuration instead of, instead of this nicer LRA-9 because we haven't got to 1958. I I'm sort of, you know... I've sort of settled on the fact that we're probably not playing the United States or Soviet Union at this point. Um, on other news, we do have the early controllable core and the lower delta avionics unit here, but they all cost a lot to unlock. And also costing a lot to unlock is the probe core configuration for procedural avionics. That's 30,000. I'm going to wait on that just a little bit. So this early controllable core is 20,000 to unlock. Delta Avionics package, 13,500. This doesn't have a low power mode. The Agena core does. That has low power mode. But it costs a lot more up front here. And it costs 35,000 to unlock. So lots of stuff to pay for. And um, we'll see. We'll see about that. But... Let's try this Aldebaran C and maybe it can handle the weather satellite contract. I also took off solar panels because they cost a lot and the contract doesn't actually require solar panels. So maybe that'll help. We'll see. It certainly reduces the overall cost, but uh, maybe it'll cause other problems, who knows. So with this being the new attempt, let's build that. Okay, with the four shortened second stage, this is looking even stubbier than usual. Thrall up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Bit of wiggling through Max Q this time. Past few times, we didn't get much of that. We do have loss of performance in one engine, but practically expected that. Uh, specific impulse is fine though, it's just thrust, so... Just a matter of the fact that it's going to increase our burn time, which is going to lead to a higher potential for further failure. On the other hand, we are below the burn time, the max burn time for these engines right now because we're staying below the 70 ton limit for the pro, uh, for the avionics cores. Okay, but managed to get through it, it looks like. Good deal. RCS on. Separation. Alright, good separation. 
and we're coasting. We've got less HTP for finer adjustments this time. Ignition. Well, we have one good engine. Okay, I'm trying to keep the vertical speed close to zero here so that we end up with a nice circular orbit. Oh, shoot, shoot. Uh, uh, oh, that's good enough, isn't it? RCS off. Yep, that's good enough. Okay, and it is done. All right, finally. And just goes to show it's still really helpful to tailor fit the rocket to the payload, apparently. Um, put one extra engine on and it just doesn't like it. Oh, we do have some extra instruments down here, don't we? I, I forgot to remove those. Those were for a different mission. Maybe there's something we can do still? Log in? No. <laughs> no, wait. Orbital perturbation I don't remember doing much of. Have we done that? Ah, we haven't. Transmit that. That used to be surface biome dependent. I wonder if it is anymore. Uh, yeah, it is. We should do some more of that while we still have electric charge. Okay, tropics. Transmit. Can we get shores? There's shores. Transmit. Shores. Uh, Savannah. There we go. Record. Transmit. Wonder if I deorbit it, whether it can do something in the atmosphere. I should deorbit this, shouldn't I? I mean, why leave the space junk, right? We've got HTP. It should be able to deorbit it. But let's finish what we've got here, and right before we lose electric charge, maybe. And Mexico has mountains. I know this. There we go. And transmit. Ought to be highlands somewhere if there's got to be mountains. But I don't know if that's a biome in real a real solar system. I forget. It's Grasslands. How about swamp? Do we have Florida swamps? A forest, I guess that's swamps. Okay. And I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. We have plenty of electric charge, actually, but... I think this is... the time to deorbit it. I'm, I don't want to waste time now. So, RCS on, please. We want to bring it down decisively so it uh, well and truly gets destroyed. I'll make sure to bring up the micrometeorite detector just in case there's a chance to do it in the atmosphere. We'll see. I doubt it. But here we go. Disposing of this properly, finally. Oh yeah, well, we have no connection right now. Maybe not the best location to do the retro burn in hindsight. Could have done with a place where we would have had communication. We might communicate through here. It depends on whether we've got a horizon problem or not. Uh, but it doesn't look like these detectors work in the atmosphere, no. How about avionics? Or oh, analyzed telemetry, yeah. I haven't done that much. Let's go ahead with that. Okay, AJ-10's exploded. Things... Okay, it's all disposed of. Alright, back to Space Center. Well, I have to say I'm a bit torn at this point because I definitely want to do a lunar mission, but people do make the point that I am tending to plunge ahead too quickly. And one thing that would be prudent for me to do before trying a lunar mission is to unlock the mission control upgrade with flight planning. Planning a maneuver node might be helpful. We do have the tracking station upgrade to get us to level 2, so there is that. But, you know, being able to plan a maneuver node is obviously a helpful thing, but it would cost our entire budget right now. We do have the option to pick up some contracts, for instance, this communication test satellite, this early weather satellite, this early navigation satellite, 
uh, they have much more difficult requirements than our more, you know, the weather satellite and navigation satellite contracts we already fulfilled. They want stuff a little bit higher, uh, greater inclination, and all that business. And they're not compatible with each other. So I can't do this weather satellite and this navigation satellite contract at the same time. That would be handy, but it is not possible because of the uh, orbit requirements. So, and nor is it possible to do this communication sa a test satellite with any of the others. This Molniya orbit satellite is totally different. So, yeah, we've got uh, such issues. And, of course, the, the advance on the lunar flyby contract is very tempting. On the other, And we could use that to unlock the tracking station. But then, if we happen to fail, then we're in big trouble. And it only gives us a year. Everything gives us a year. It's like that, incidentally, the, the people wait a little bit longer for these things to happen than a year normally. But, uh, you know, even uh, today with commercial contracts, they, they take a while to launch, actually. But um, these guys are demanding. So, yeah. There's always explains. So I, I don't think so. It doesn't pay very well. That's the problem with the sounding rocket contracts. They never did pay very well. This one is not too bad, actually, but still probably not worth our time anymore. Except for the Pioneer probe option, I do have an alternate lunar rocket. And this one's a little bit more full featured, though much more expensive, as you can see. And this is an Atlas rocket. And it has at the top here an AVI unit to 200% utilization, since people told me I'm allowed to do that. It basically means that it costs a whole lot more than a 100% utilization one would, but it's it's rather handy in this situation. So that's uh, that's the AVI unit for five tons. Then we've got a tank here with hydrazine, because I've unlocked hydrazine. I also unlocked the one kilonewton thruster, which is currently running on hydrazine here. Uh, that gives this 1,155 meters per second right up here. The 1 kilonewton thruster doesn't have a burn time limit. And we've got the RCS, full RCS control. We've got the micrometeorite detector. We've got the other instruments here, orbital perturbation, etc. And we also have lots of solar panels because we're not carrying a whole lot of power here, 824.4. We needed 19 watts of power to satisfy that core. And if we take a look, this tiny solar panel has three watts. So as long as we orient it properly, this array of nine of them provides 27 watts and a little bit more. And so that should be enough for this, though very expensive, of course. These tiny little solar panels are not cheap. So that's the downside. Other than that, it's the same old rocket that you guys are used to, the Atlas, with the very able stage. Uh, and. You know, we're, we're thrilled to have the very able stage here, but uh, we're still waiting on... The next technology unlock is 1958 orbital rocketry, and hopefully that includes some better version of the AJ-10. I trust it does. But we are still waiting on that. So this is an option, and maybe, maybe I'll get this started, and we'll launch for the moon. I, I know you guys... You guys probably will advise me not to do this, but what the hey. All right, let's go for it. Let's try it. Might as well rush build this a little bit, rush build that a little bit. Oh, sorry, I had a little bit of a recording error. We actually brought the Aldebaran Pioneer to the pad and lined up with the moon and tried to launch and one of the engines didn't light so we're covering it right now and we'll see how we can fix it up but we're likely to have the same sort of situation where it's going to light one engine immediately and that's actually not good in this case because we have to line up with the moon and that's not going to make that particularly easy is it well, let's put the T-tip back in. Ignition remaining one. Yep, well, they both seem to have ignition. Wish I kept track of exactly how long it took to bring it back and what time we wanted to launch, because 
well, it doesn't matter. It's going to take seven days. Well, I could probably have worked it out so that we happen to reach the launch pad at the right time so that when it ignites the engine immediately, we'll be okay to go. But I did not figure that out ahead of time. I wonder if there's some other contract we can pick up. Well, these all require some sort of special... Wait, this one doesn't. New vessel uncrewed above 7,250 7, kilometers. I think we can do that, assume, well, you know, assuming everything doesn't fail. We'll give it a go. 90 days only, though. Well, it did exactly what I thought it would do. Or not. Wait. Aw, oh, it ignited... It, it fake ignited that. It said failed to ignite. And it tried to ignite it, but it failed to ignite. <sighs> right. Well. Oh, I went a little bit past. But roughly speaking, around 4, let's say 4.50 p.m. Now, is that going to be the same time that we ought to launch in, let's say, two weeks? But instead of going to the pad immediately, we'll time warp until it's 4.50. That might be the wrong time, but we've got so many other things that could go wrong with this. We're just really trying to test out the premise. Um, actually, this time it doesn't look like they immediately ignited. Well, even better. We can check like this now. No, 11.6 degrees, so we have to account for a certain amount of time having passed. Doesn't quite work out that way. Okay, let's try this. Throttle up. And ignition. Oh. Uh, I'm a little bit afraid of what will happen when I try to ignite them through normal staging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down as a dummy stage, just in case. That's what I was afraid of. Why does it even have PSPC there? Hmm. Okay, well we're going to have to activate them like this. And that means that they might not have gimbling at all. We're about to find out. Oh, wait. One has... Oh, jeez. It has reduced specific impulse and thrust. We're still going up, but it's going to be pretty bad overall. Seems like they have gimbling, maybe? Actually? Well, remember, all we really need to do is get beyond 7,250 kilometers and we at least fill something. Being knocked about a bit, but it should be okay. Still wonder why it reads half of its PSPC when there's none there. It's a curious thing. That's the little uh, solid motor inside the Pioneer probe, which I emptied. So. Okay, RCS on separation. And zero will do there. Oh, it's a bit knocked. Okay, let's see. Very stable, it says. Let's find out if that's true. Oh, two engines this time. But we're not going to get to the moon like this. Well, sort of a waste to have a proper ignition of this stage for this mission, given the failure of the first stage. Okay, beginning to spin a bit. And... let's try it. Ah, uh, oh no, that's fine. Insufficient avionics is fine. That's what's supposed to happen. And we just need a high apoapsis. I should have aimed to deliberately deorbit it, but... 
doesn't look like that's going to happen. Then again, we could test a few things out with fit light to communication and the electric charge. Just above, I think. Um, well, you have to actually get to that altitude, but we will get there. Is there any interesting science we could do right now? Radiation is not anything new. Ah, magnetic scan just above water of an Earth. So that's a, that's a biome dependent one. Okay, mass spectrometry. That's new. Impacts, not so much. Visible imaging, also good. Okay, we did get that contract fulfilled. So, sounding rocket done. Okay, shores, magnetic scan, mass spectrometry, visible imaging. Well, at least for the altitude that we went for, the communication seemed fine. Power seems to be holding up fine too. Let's say we were trying for four days of duration or something. Wait, grasslands. Okay, I think I've gotten enough science out of this. We're at 77 right now. Um, we've been active for six hours. We've used a hundred... Well, let's pretend it's just it's 200 just for buffer. We've got 20 times that, which means we can do 20 times six hours, which should be enough to get to the moon. So, in fact, we could probably cut down on this a little bit. That's more than I thought I'd put in there. We might want to review that. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll keep these numbers in mind and we might uh, redo this one. But for now, we've got the Atlas one being built. And that's going to be done in 19 days because of all the trouble we had with this one. Hmm. Anyway, let's go back to Space Center and talk about it. Well, first of all, let's try and get some more science unlocked and see what we ought to do. What have we got here? Orbital rocketry. Well, there's the Agena engine. It's not the Agena engine in its best state. In other words, the one with uh, many ignitions. I think the 15 ignitions here. That one's nice. So I would like that version, but it'll take a while for us to get to that. But it's a start. There's this upgrade to the AJ-10, and we could probably do with any sort of upgrade to an AJ-10 at this point. Not an upgrade to the LR-89 though, which I would like, but I think we might get some of that over here maybe? There it is. So that'll get us the full LR-89 and also an upgrade to the LR-105. That's already queued though. Human rated EDL. Well, that's sort of important, isn't it? And basic capsules, but we have to upgrade the R&D building before we even get a capsule. So do we really want to spend on human-rated EDL until we can get that? How much is the upgrade for the R&D building going to cost? 500,000. Crew survivability is just going to be required for this as well. This is a good engine, the RD0110. We get a bunch of upgrades around here as well, but ah, well, there is an LRA9. And another upgrade for the AJ10. A Gina propellant tank. That's pretty cheap, 85. Service module 2. I don't need to retool things again. Centaur stage, but not the engines. More sciencey things, but we can't unlock that one anyway. Lunar range communications eventually. Primitive solar panels. Well, we could do with anything better than what we've got right now. So, let's try this orbital rocketry, the primitive solar panels, lunar range communication. You can see what we're basically going to be trying to do here, and it's not going to be crew. We might even unlock 1960 orbital rocketry before trying anything else. I think we ought to. 
but I'll consider that. I'm not going to spend that just now. Now we got some upgrade points. Let's speed up R&D a bit. Speed up construction a bit and see which is the more desperate situation. <laughs> um, I think the R&D is the more desperate situation, so I'll put the extra point there. Harley seems to help. But okay, so we've got that. And next time, we're going to see about this Lunar Atlas and the Lunar Flyby mission. So, well, we're up against it now, so we'll see how it goes. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.